I'm not so I'll spend extra 10 minutes dodging traffic. I'm good, thank you. Good morning. I would like to welcome all of you to worship for those of you who are here worshiping in person and for those of you who are watching online. Welcome. I'm Pastor Maggie and I'm so grateful to be worshiping with all of you today. It is with a heavy heart that I share with you the passing of Patsy Askew. Per Patsy's wishes, there will be no funeral service. To allow some space for this news, let us hold her in our thoughts and her family in prayer in a moment of silence. We will also pray for Patsy and her family later in the service. I invite you all to settle in, to allow yourself a chance to breathe, and to center yourself with our Creator and with one another by hearing these words from Psalm, 1, or from Psalm 51. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us boldly confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. We confess we have armed ourselves through our words, actions, and thoughts. Forgive us and help us to forgive others. Nurture our hearts with your love. Provide us your peace and immerse us in your grace so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, the one who pours out goodness and mercy, your sins are forgiven. May you be strengthened to live into God's promises today and all days. Amen. We will now sing our gathering song as we gather at your table, number 522.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of joyous music and of sheer silence, quiet in us any voice but your own, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we might hear, and in hearing we might believe, and in believing we might act, making way for your new creation. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. morning. Our reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 12, verses 2 through 6. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might, and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on God's name. Make known the deeds of the Lord among the nations. Proclaim that this name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able to welcome the gospel. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When some were speaking about the temple and how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the day will come when not one stone will be left upon another, all will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that it is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all of this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. They will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. For I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends. And they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and any children are welcome to come forward. Sorry. 
Good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing today? Good. Good. So today we have a special thing happening. We're going to have a baptism later in the service. So that's why we have our baptism font out. I know we talked a little bit about baptism last week. Does anybody remember what baptism is? No? So you remember? Yes, we are all lucky in God's eyes because God, through baptism, we're born into God's kingdom and we're created a child of God. And God shows us his love. And so last week we talked, through our baptisms, we all become saints. That was kind of cool last week. So this week we're going to talk a little bit about something kind of fun. So have you guys done this before where you take your hands and you put your fingers together like this? And then can you take your pointer finger and put it up? And then put your pinky finger and put it up. Have you ever heard this before? It goes, here is the church, here is the steeple, open the doors and see all the people. Have you done that before? No. No. It's something I think, maybe I'm dating myself. (laughs) Something we did as kids. We didn't have cool toys that you guys have today. (laughs) So the thing about this is to talk about a church and what happens inside a church. What do we do inside a church? Yeah? You forgot? That's okay. Learn about God. Yes, we learn about God. So all the things we do inside a church, we learn about God and we make faith together. So we learn about how God informs our faith and how we're children of God through our baptism. So we get to do all of that stuff at church. But you know what else we can do with our hands? Yes, that was awesome. Somebody said pray. I don't know who said it. You did. Awesome. So we fold our hands in prayer. So we have to remember that when we're not in the church, because you think there's always people inside the church? No. There's not people always inside the church. So when we're not in the church, we can remember our faith by doing our hands in prayer. Can you guys do that? Okay, should we pray together about that? All right, let us fold our hands and pray. Dear Dear God, thank you for giving us a place to worship. Help us to remember that our faith lives in us. Remind us to pray when we are not at church. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. You guys did so good. You can head back to your seats. Thank you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O God, my strength and my joy. Amen. The Notre Dame Cathedral in France was erected in 1163, and it has been a popular destination for many Christians, historians, and tourists, making the date April 15, 2019, a day to remember, as that was the day when the famous Notre Dame Cathedral caught fire. The fire burned for 15 hours, while firefighters did their best to contain the blaze and work to keep as much of the building intact as possible. I remember the shock that many people shared when they heard of this devastating news. The world united in prayer with prayer vigils and people came together in song. World leaders spoke out on multiple platforms on the devastation and extended their thoughts and prayers. Pope Francis reported of his shock and sadness, noting that the Cathedral of Notre Dame is a symbol of Christianity in France and in the world. A symbol of Christianity. Now I think that is an accurate description. As us humans like to have our symbols, our buildings, and physical things, as they are something that we can cling to something that we can embody and experience in our flesh, which is important when it comes to faith, 
as so much of faith is about what is not seen and not known. But sometimes, symbols or places can take on too much value, and the original meaning can become lost, especially when it comes to faith. Because when a place becomes more important than the faith that is to be cultivated there, we risk succumbing to idolatry. Which makes me wonder if that is what Jesus was getting at today, that faith is more than a worship space. And maybe Jesus chose to use this apocalyptic and doom-filled gospel to not only share his insights on the future. Maybe Jesus spoke these words to shake his disciples up, to illustrate to them that faith is more than a worship space. Because I can only imagine hearing what Jesus had to say about the sacred temple would have been quite shocking. As the temple had been around for over 500 years, and not only that, it had recently undergone an extensive and impressive renovation by Herod. And according to historians, Herod was quite the builder and spared no expenses. In fact, the renovations took 80 years to complete. The renovations included ample white marble, Babylonian tapestries made from fine linen, dyed deep blue, scarlet, and purple, with gold and silver-plated gates and gold-plated doors throughout. Which makes me think that when the disciples heard of this utter destruction, that they must have had similar emotions to those of us who witnessed the fire at the Notre Dame Cathedral. But the bad news didn't stop there in the gospel. Jesus continued on by sharing his predictions of earthquakes, famines, and plagues. And if we change out the word plague for pandemic, it really makes you wonder, what century was Jesus really speaking to? Yet throughout this turbulent gospel, filled with doom and hard-to-stomach thoughts, the good news still shines through at the end. That with all earthly structures crumbling, with death and disease abounding, Jesus boldly claims that not a hair on your head will perish. And the only way that Jesus could boldly claim this is because, he was, is because of what he was about to do. Because shortly after this conversation took place, Jesus died on the cross and went to the place of ultimate destruction. But as we all know, that space was not able to contain him, allowing him to come back from that place, eradicating the finality of death, and by doing so, creating a new creation. A creation where not even a hair on your head will perish. A creation where there is no disease, death, or famine. A creation where there is no fear or worry. Where God's love conquers all. A creation that you were born into through your baptism. Where you were united with Christ in both his death and in his resurrected life. And today we will be baptizing Jackson Edward Miller into this creation, into this community, and into the greater community of faith. Because faith is more than a single worship place. Faith lives because of the workings of the Holy Spirit. Faith lives because of the sacrifice of Christ. Faith lives because God is always creating all things new. And as important as it is to have places to worship so that we can come together in prayer and in song to receive the word of God and the body and blood of Christ, it is just as important 
to take that same faith, the faith that we cultivate here together, out into the world. And if you are worried about how to do that, remember what Jesus said in the midst of this chaotic gospel, that he will give you words and wisdom, because faith lives in you, not in a building. And the Christian faith has been around for over 2,000 years, with the roots of our faith extending to well over 10,000 years ago, when the words of the Old Testament were passed on through the word of mouth. Because the thing about faith is that it will always find a space to breathe. God will always find a way to cultivate faith. God will always bring people together in worship, prayer, and in song. Because even when symbols of the Christian faith are destroyed, like the temple, or when they are threatened with destruction, like the Notre Dame Cathedral, history shows that faith prevails and that people come together. Because the Holy Spirit works and the Holy Spirit provides. And that is my prayer, that this space, the Holy Spirit will provide you with what you need for the week. That this space is a place where you can come to be fueled up for the week. So that when you leave here and you enter the turbulent mission field of life, you can share that same love of Christ with others. The love of Christ that lives in each of you. For nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. Amen. We will continue with the baptism of Jackson Edward Miller. At this time, I invite Hannah, Wyatt, Jackson, Nicole, and Andy to join me at the baptismal font. If you all want to stand kind of here so you can face the congregation, and I'll stand on this side. God, who is rich in mercy and loves, gives us new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Sponsors? Hannah and Wyatt, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? As you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, Place in his hands the holy scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help him grow in the Christian faith in life? Nicole and Andy, do you promise to nurture Jackson in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit? to help him live into the covenant of baptism and in the communion with the church? People of God, do you promise to support Jackson and pray for him in his new life? If so, please respond with, we do. We do. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? Congregation, please stand as you are able. 
Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John, anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You can just bring him over here. He has a very wonderful hat on. We're just going to remove it. <laughs> Jackson Edward Miller, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very, very good. <laughs> there. Aww. Let us pray. We give thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Loving God, sustain Jackson Edward Miller with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Jackson Edward Miller, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming world to all. Please be seated and we will continue with our baptism hymn, Morning Cry number 732. You may all be seated as well. Is that good? Yep. Okay. Oh, so sweet.
Please stand as you are able. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation, responding to God of grace with hear our prayer. Creator God, as the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest and new life. Help us to care for what you have made. God of grace, gracious God, bring an end to unjust systems, war, crime, suffering, and hatred. Unite people in conversation, respect, and love. God of grace, enduring God, as people get ready to start the rifle season, keep them safe, provide them opportunities, and keep them out of harm's way. God of grace, Faithful God, in honor of Veterans Day, we give thanks and lift up all who have served our country for the sacrifices made, for their dedication, time, and service, for those who have been injured, for families who lost loved ones, for those who are struggling. May each of them feel your presence and your peace. God of grace. Loving God, we pray for all people who are impacted by Hurricane Nicole. Provide the proper resources to help the people in need. Comfort families who lost loved ones and provide healing for any who are injured. God of grace. Mothering God, you live in each one of us. You send the Spirit forth to cultivate faith and to share Christ's love with others. Help us to live into our faith. Sustain us, guide us, and bring us peace. God of grace. Eternal God, with heavy hearts we come to you today. We lift up Dwayne's family and for all who are mourning the loss of Patsy. We also lift up my husband Keenan's family and all who are mourning the loss of his Aunt Linda. Provide your comfort and peace. May we find hope knowing that both Patsy and Linda are with you now, that you are holding them in your loving embrace, for nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, God of grace. Merciful God, you stand with the suffering and give strength. Comfort your people filled with fear or anxiety, anger or shame. Bring healing to all who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. Today we especially lift up my grandmother Peggy Orvez, Pat Paisky, Marilyn Grunenwald, Kathy Reisman, Pat Plunkett, Robin Hine, Thea Heil, and Carol Fitzke. May your healing spirit reach them all where it is needed and bring them into the fullness of life you desire for each of them. God of grace, abiding God, abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for all members of St. John. May you meet each person where they are at and infuse their week with hope. We also lift up this week's prayer ministry, Jean Troy, Brian Marquardt, Pat Paisky, George Webb, Scott Bookberger, Lane Barr, Randy Gravine, 
Anna Kununderitz, Sophie Hoffman, Michael Levesque, Barbara Jo Kalp, Katie Vandergeest, God of Grace. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you now to share the peace with one another, however you feel comfortable. You may be seated and we'll continue with our offering. Let us pray. Abundant God, receive these gifts and bless them with your presence. May they be a part of our mission, a part of your vision, and a blessing to the world. Through Jesus Christ, who taught us to give. Amen. Before we begin communion, is anybody not wanting to partake in continuous that would like uh, individual wafer communion at your table, or excuse me, at the pew? If so, raise your hand and the usher can bring it around for you. All right, then please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give our and it is indeed our duty, our right, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray how Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. For those of you wanting to take prepackaged communion, I invite you to open the wafer side and hear these words. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. I now invite you to open the juice side and to hear these words. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. We're going to do communion a little bit differently today. The ushers will invite you all into one line. So you'll all come together and then you'll receive the bread from me and then just go to your corresponding sides to receive the wine or the juice. And there are little baskets on each side of the sanctuary to put your cups in. So we'll continue do a continuous communion that way. I now invite the communion assistants to come forward and for all to taste and see that the Lord is good.
Let us pray. Nourishing God, we give you thanks that you have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. Enliven us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For announcements, Louis would like to thank everyone who has visited Kathy and who has sent cards. There is a bulletin posted on the bulletin board out there for Crossways Camping Ministries. They're holding a meeting on Saturday, December 3rd. And if you are interested in attending, you can either read that over or talk to me about it. If you haven't filled out a time and talent sheet, those are available for you in the narthex. There is also an insert in your bulletin about the warming shelter and items that are needed. Please take a look at this if you are able to donate. Sunday, next Sunday, November 20th, after worship, in the fellowship hallway, right after worship, will be our annual pie auction. You are invited to stay, to bring pies, however you would like to celebrate the pie auction. Then on the next Tuesday, November 22nd, at 6.30 p.m., will be our Thanksgiving evening service. Are there any other announcements? Then please stand as you are able to receive the blessing. May the peace of God be in your heart, the grace of God be in your words, the love of God be in your hands, and the joy of God be in your soul and in the song that your life sings. In the name of the Creator, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us conclude worship with our sending song, Day by Day, number 790. in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God.